in this uh, we are going to learn about uh, system of ODEs and how to solve them so let's uh, start with the introduction uh, so let's say uh, so let t uh, be the independent variable independent uh, variable independent variable and let's say x1 and x2 x1 and x2 uh, be the dependent variable be the dependent variables so there can be more than uh, two dependent variables but for the introduction let's assume just two so we have uh, t as the independent variable and then x1 and x2 as the dependent variable so suppose suppose uh, x1 prime the derivative of x1 is a function of is a function of x2 prime that's the other dependent variable and x1 x2 and the t the independent variable and similarly uh, x2 prime is a function of is a function of x1 prime x1 x2 and t so that means uh, so we can write this in uh, in this form uh, so that is that is x1 prime is a function of x2 prime comma x1 x2 and t so we separate each variable by a comma so this means that x1 is a function of those uh, four quantities similarly uh, we can say x2 prime is a function of x1 prime uh, x1 x2 t so the two different functions so we can write it like that so that means x1 depends on all those four quantities similarly uh, x2 depend on these four quantities so you can see that x1 is a function of those variables and x2 is a function of those variables so if so that means they they depend on each other so that's why we call it is a system it is a system so we normally write this one as so you can just write it like that or sometimes we even like you know, add a little like uh, curly brace like that uh, just to mean that it is a system but some books use that some uh, just ignore that so but uh, if you see that it's the same thing uh, so it says that they work together they are coupled each other okay they are coupled system it's a called systems coupled because x1 controlled by all those four uh, quantities and x2 controlled by all those four quantities so they depend on each other so so the problem is you cannot solve you cannot solve for one um, you have to solve them at the same time. So what we call we solve them simultaneously. We can talk about that later. So and also add some extra condition because these are differential equations. So you need some initial conditions. So we can add let's say with uh, let's add some initial conditions. Let's say uh, x1 at a point A. Uh, uh, let's say B and x2 at a point C equal d some numbers uh, because we need at least two uh, uh, to solve this one because x1 is the first derivative x2 is the first derivative so you need uh, one uh, initial condition for each now so this one this this these two together is called a system of ODs of the first order why first order all the derivatives are first order so this is called this is called this is called first order first order later we're going to talk about other order as well so this is called a first order system of system of odes ordinary differential equation 
is called a system of first order ODs. Uh, in uh, you can say this is a, this is called a system of ODs in uh, independent variable t. Independent, independent variable t and the dependent variable dependent variables always there should be at least two otherwise there's no system dependent variables x1 and x2 okay so that's that's the idea it's a very simple idea uh, so let's try to like a like an example for that real example so I can say, for example, for example, you can write x1 prime equal to x2 prime uh, plus e to the t and x2 prime equal x1 prime plus sine t uh, plus 3. So that's a system. Uh, with so you can say with uh, x1 0 equal to and x2 0 equal negative 1 so if you don't have those two then you can find a general solution so you can do that so you can find general solution if you are not given initial condition okay so that's the system so this is for example this is a system and you can write those terms anywhere you like uh, because you can move those terms around but this is the kind of uh, thing that we can do okay so uh so again uh, is uh, is a is a system of is a system of uh ODs. as you can see again it is uh, first order because you can see the derivatives are first order okay now the question is what we mean by solving so let's talk about that uh, so idea is pretty similar to ODs like regular differential equations so solving solving a system solving a system of ODs solving a system of ODs what it is uh, means that means that uh, to find two solutions there are only two equations so find uh, two solutions find two solutions x1 t and x2 t uh, that satisfies that satisfies That satisfy. That satisfy. Uh, both equations, both equations, and initial conditions. Initial conditions. Uh, if given. So if the initial conditions are not given, uh, we can find a general solution. Uh, so how to do it so to do that uh, so to do that to do that uh, we need to solve uh, two equations simultaneously to do that we need to solve we need to solve two equations So two means because we have two here. Okay, otherwise it can be three, four, five like that. Two equations simultaneously. Uh, so it's the same thing. We solved simultaneous equations earlier, so it's the same idea. But now we have differential equations, so that's the only problem. But otherwise, just the idea is very similar. You can see once we start solving problems, we just pretty much follow the same thing. Uh, since so what's the reason since uh, one depend on the other since one depend on the other 
depends on the other. Um, so we can say uh, most of the time. So sometimes you know there are situations you can just solve one equation that works, but that's very rare. So most of the time, most of the time, we cannot, we cannot solve one equation. But there are situations, there are special situations that, that happens. For example, when you try to do our first example, it's like that. You can just solve one equation uh, without any problem. But that, that hardly happens. Okay, so now the question is how to solve them? What are the techniques that we have? So we can talk about three techniques. So let's talk about that. Uh, so the question is how to solve? How to solve system of ODEs? system of ODEs how to solve how to solve system of ODEs so we can talk about um, three techniques um, so we use we use uh, three methods we use three methods we use three methods to solve uh, such systems such a system so let's start with the easiest one what we call the uh, elimination method elimination method under elimination we can talk about two methods uh, when we have only one type of derivatives or when we have mixed uh, mixed uh, variables the two types so this is pretty much similar to like you are solving a simple uh, three variable or two variable uh, simultaneous equations you have done that in like middle school or maybe high school so it's the same idea very similar that's the first one the second one is uh, what we call we're going to extend the laplace transform technique for that so the second method is a laplace transform method so elimination method Elimination method are uh, two types. And then uh, the Laplace transform method. Laplace transform method. And then the third one is the uh, eigenvector method. eigenvector method so let's uh, go uh, let's talk about them one by one so let's start with the uh, elimination method that's the like uh, easiest method elimination method so uh, one the elimination method so in elimination method there are two types uh, two types two types uh, so the first one uh, what we're gonna do uh, we have uh, only you can say only uh, first order derivatives first order derivative terms derivative terms so that means uh, you can only see like a x1 prime x2 prime like that you don't see x1 terms or x2 terms you don't see them so that's the first type so the second type you're gonna see the mixed type so mixed terms mixed terms so you're gonna see like all type of terms you're gonna see x1 x2 x1 x2 and all that so that's the, those are two types because you can see that when we solve uh, the technique is uh, slightly different from each other so let's talk about the first one the e so i'm going to so type one elimination type one so we have only uh, x1 prime x2 prime terms 
uh, but you do not have x1 or x2 terms but you can have t the independent variable you don't have these terms okay so um, so the idea is uh, we can see that um, uh, eliminate uh, we can say eliminate uh, um, let's say uh, eliminate eliminate dependent variables dependent variables that means uh, prime terms and x terms both eliminate dependent variables variables because there can be more variables so that only one variable left so that uh, there is there is only one variable only one uh, dependent variable dependent variable left there is only one a dependent variable left okay there is only one dependent variable left it's only one uh, it will be clear like you know from an examples so what we gonna do if there are more variables what we try to do we gonna remove uh, all the other variables and leave only one variable okay so that's the idea so let's look at an example so let's say uh, solve the system solve the system solve the system x1 prime equal to x2 prime plus e to the t and x2 prime equal 3 x1 prime plus sine t plus 5 those are differential equations with let's add some initial conditions let's say x1 0 equal 2 and x2 0 equal negative 1 so this is the kind of system you are talking about you can see that there are only derivative terms see only the derivative terms you don't see uh, any x1 or x2 terms so this is the first type so what we gonna do this is this is the most easiest case we're gonna take the derivative terms to one side and we can rewrite the system uh, so what we gonna do uh, so the idea is take all derivative terms that means the dependent variable okay take all derivative terms to one side so that's the idea so let's do that you can see that it's very simple uh, so the answer uh, we may rewrite the system as we may rewrite we may rewrite the system as uh, x1 prime minus 2 x2 prime equal e to the t and then negative 3 x1 prime I'm gonna write like x1 below like all the x1s and x2 aligned so it's easy plus x2 prime equal sine t minus 5 plus 5 minus 5 yeah actually I'm gonna put minus sign here uh, because it's easy to solve so let's let's change that to plus 5 to minus 5 in the original problem okay because that's much easier to solve yeah especially as the first example uh, I mean it doesn't matter it's a number so I'm gonna call the first equation equation number one and the second equation equation number two it's easy to refer Okay. So negative 5 I change the sign okay so originally it was plus 5 but I changed to minus 5 okay now what we're gonna do the idea is this very simple 
we try to remove one variable we try to remove either x1 prime or x2 prime my goal is to just it doesn't matter which one let's remove x2 prime so i'm going to remove this term from the uh, equations how to do that it's a very simple idea um, remember when we try to solve a um, system of linear equations we use the same idea one is we try to solve for one variable and substitute for the other i do not recommend recommend that method because that's pretty much long, sometimes really long instead what we try to do look for the coefficients you can see if you look at the coefficients this one has a negative two so what we're trying to do if you can create a positive two here if you can create a positive two here once you add the two x2 prime get cancelled so that's the idea we try to create we try to create the opposite sign of the same term so in this case i'm gonna remove x2 prime so what we're trying to do we're gonna create the opposite signs and then we're gonna add so how to do that you're gonna multiply the second equation by two then you get the then you get plus two x2 prime and then we can add them so that's the idea we're gonna create the opposite sign so we can simply say by so this is what we do okay by one plus two times y2 opposite sign two times we have negative two so positive two times two so if you do that if you just multiply the second equation by two and add to the first one you can see uh the that term get cancelled so since this is the first one i'm going to do it but later i will not do that so what will happen you you have the first one no problem just as it is no changes but what to do you're going to multiply the second equation by two and add so that means it's going to be negative six x one prime and then plus two x two prime the same thing happened on the other side so the e2 no change but you uh, simply change the second one by two so two sine t minus 10 do you multiply by 10 and add so now you can see what happened this term get cancelled that's the whole point so you're going to cancel that term and then you write the uh, rest so you're going to get negative 5 x1 prime equal e to the t plus 2 sine t minus 10 you can divide both sides by negative 5 so once you divide by negative 5 you can see that this is x1 prime negative one fifth e to the t negative two fifth sine t plus two okay um yeah so that means you solve for x1 prime so this is simply dx1 over dt so to get x1 what do you want to do that's exactly what you do at the beginning of the class of course you can see that you simply integrate once you integrate you're going to get x1 so integrating with respect to uh, t so integrating with respect to t you're going to get x1 which is a function of t that's how you can do it because t is the variable uh, so it's the integral of dx1 over dt times dt so you see you see that dt dt get cancelled and you get uh, x1 so that means you simply integrate uh, these terms so we have a lot of terms i'm writing this step this is really not necessary but since this is a first example i will do it uh, plus two and then dt so you can see very simple integral and uh, you get the answer so once you finish the integral uh, you're going to get the answer like this you can see that uh, x1 t is a simply negative one fifth e to the t plus two fifth cosine t because that was a sign plus two t plus c1 so you need that extra uh, variable now what we can do uh, we can solve for c1 because we need we need the initial condition so we can say since uh, x1 0 equal 2 we can see that 2 equal just plug in t equals 0 negative 1 fifth positive 1 fifth where the cosine 0 equals 0 plus 0 plus c1 this says that c1 equal uh, 9 fifth okay so this is going to give you the value of uh, just going to give you the x1 uh, completely so x1 t is 
now you can plug in the values so negative one fifth e to the t plus two fifth cosine t plus two t plus nine fifth now what we can do uh, so there are like several ways to do now you can pick one of those equation plug in there so for example if you go to uh, equation 2 it doesn't matter which one but x2 has x2 prime easily so you can go to one equation and substitute uh, because since we know x1 you plug in x1 and solve for x2 so that's the idea uh, or you can eliminate the other variable doing similar thing like for example you can multiply the first equation by 3 and add uh, that's going to give you x2 prime and then integrate that's another way to do it um, or just substitute for uh, the second equation then you can solve for that so like yeah there are two ways to do so you can eliminate the other variable also by first one by uh, multiplying by three and then add into the second one or you can substitute our answer into the second equation so I'm gonna do that method because that's normally what we do uh, so you can say then by 2 then by 2 then by 2 we have x2 prime we have x2 prime uh, equal uh, 3 x1 prime plus sine t uh, minus 5 uh, so let's plug in so it is 3 so we know that x1 prime that means we have to take the derivative of x1 so which is negative 1 fifth uh, et or we can just leave it like that because the next step is you try to integrate once you integrate what will happen uh, you're going to get the uh, function back so since we know that you are going to integrate since we know that you are going to integrate you can leave it like that but in a general problem you have to substitute here and simplify so because of that because of that uh, I'm gonna just take the derivative here and then integrate again but you really don't have to do that uh, in, a, uh, in, in certain situations because in this case when you try to integrate uh, both sides here you get x2 on the other side you get x1 since you know x1 you can just plug it right there uh, or just follow the pattern and then you can see that so since I'm just follow the general technique uh, not specific so I'm gonna normally what we do is we take the derivative here first okay so because of that I do it but you know there are certain problems you don't have to do that and then once you take the derivative uh, so you're gonna get negative uh, 2 fifth uh, sine t uh, and then plus 2 that's what you get as a derivative and then plus sine t uh, minus 5 now we simplify this so after you simplify you're gonna get negative uh, so you get uh, negative 3 fifth negative 3 fifth et and then my negative uh, so what do you get you have uh, negative 6 fifth sine t and sine t they cancel each other some of them cancel each other so you only left with 1 fifth sine t and then you have uh, 6 minus 5 so 1 so that's what you get uh, and then what you do is uh, you integrate so by integrating by integrating x2 equal uh, x2 prime dt you integrate the derivative and then so you're gonna get negative 3 fifth e to the t so this is a uh, negative sign that means a cosine so it is one fifth uh, cosine t plus t plus c uh, 2 uh, now what we can do is we can use the initial condition and solve for that so let's do that so uh, since uh, x2 0 equal uh, negative 2 I guess uh, x2 0 negative 1 so negative 1 uh, so we can see that uh, negative 1 equal that's x2 value uh, is negative 3 fifth 
uh, plus one fifth is a cosine plus zero plus c2 so this can give you uh, the c2 value so how much the c2 value is you can see uh, negative two fifths is negative two fifth uh, and then uh, so we have a negative five uh, so we have negative three fifth okay we have negative two fifth uh, and then so it is negative five plus two negative three yeah so we're gonna get that and then it's gonna give you the solution so uh, so that means x2 t is just plug in the value in the uh, x2 function uh, so you're gonna get negative 3 fifth e to the t plus 1 fifth cosine t plus t plus c Oh, C2, C2 we, we know now. So it is negative 3 fifth. So negative, negative. So negative 3 fifth. So that's the uh, x2 function. So we solve for the x1 function and the x2 function. Actually, you can write them together. So you can say, so therefore, yeah, that's a good idea. So therefore, uh, x1 t equal so what we get for x1 t uh, so for x1 t we get negative 1 fifth e t plus 2 fifth cosine t plus 2 t plus 9 fifth and x2 t equal uh, we just got that is negative 3 fifth e t plus 1 fifth cosine t plus t uh, and then we have minus 3 fifth so that's the solution to the um, system with initial conditions so it's just a basic integration so what we did was we try to uh, remove one variable and uh, solve for the other one. So let's talk about the second method. So this is kind of interesting. So this is kind of a little bit new. So it's a type 2. So type 2. So what we have is uh, mixed terms. We have mixed terms. So what, is it, what we mean by that, you can see x1 prime. Uh, like inside that you also see like x1 x2 like that so that's why the, what we mean by mixed terms we also see these terms so let's see how we do in this situation we try to kind of uh, gonna go to a previous uh, things that we learned earlier so let's start with one easy so example one so same idea remove um, one variable Okay, so the idea is again uh, remove one variable so let's say solve the system so let's say we have uh, y1 prime equal y1 and then y2 prime equal y1 minus y2 uh, with let's say y1 0 equal 1 and y2 0 equal 2 so that's the system so you can see that this system is slightly different first because uh, you're gonna see mixed terms here so you're gonna see uh, in this case the dependent variables are y so you can see y1 prime and y1 also at the same time so you're gonna see this and also that and similarly uh, you're gonna see this and also that see so all the so that's why it's a mixed type so when you have mixed types same idea we try to remove one variable but when you remove one variable it won't be just like a simple integration problem uh, so you have to do something you might need to go with the characteristic equation and things like that uh, but you can see in this special problem you can solve the first problem without any issues 
because it's, a, it's just a y1 since it is just y1 you can solve the first equation but can we solve the second equation no we can solve the second equation because the second equation is y1 and y2 both since it has y1 and y2 both without knowing y1 you cannot solve for y2 but in the first equation since you do not have y2 you can directly solve the first equation okay so that's exactly what we do we're going to solve the first equation that's simple you can see um, there are a lot of ways to solve that equation you can do uh, separation of variable uh, you can do uh, integrating factors or you can just do the um, characteristic equation is find the lambdas first and solve because that would be the easiest actually find the lambdas but you can use the separation of variable you can use the integrating factor method but i'm going to use the uh, constant coefficient uh, type one okay because it's that's that's faster for this kind of problem okay so let's do it uh good uh so what we're going to do you can say from the first equation from the first equation uh, we have uh, y1 prime I'm going to bring it to uh, one side like that now uh, you can see that the characteristic equation is lambda minus 1 equals 0 uh, this says that a lambda equal 1 so that means we know the lambda value so we can have the solution so therefore the solution is y1 equal a constant times e to the 1 t so e to the t so that's the solution of that so you can get the same solution using the uh, separation of variable integrating factors all the other things okay even series solution okay but this is the easiest good now uh, since we know y1 now actually we can what we can complete to solve for uh, c1 uh, because we know the initial condition so we can solve uh, so then say using the initial condition using the initial condition uh, we have y1 0 equal 1 is given okay so it says that uh, to get 1 so what do you get you can 1 equal c1 okay e to the 0 uh, so this says that c1 equal 1 so therefore the solution is uh, so you can say therefore uh, y1 equal et now what we can do is we can plug in that into the second equation okay so then the second equation then the second equation uh, gives y2 prime equal uh, we have y1 minus y2 so y1 means e to the t that we have here minus y2 so now what we can do is we can bring everything to one side y2 prime plus y2 equal et so this is a simple integrating factor plus first order linear so we can use the uh, integrating factor you can use integrating factors or undetermined coefficient for that integrating factor would be the easiest okay so uh, so we use we use integrating factors we use integrating integrating factor method okay yeah we use uh, integrating factor uh, method so let's use that uh, in this case the integrating factor will be uh, e to the uh, integral of 1 t so e to the t good uh, so the integrating factor is simply uh, e to the uh, p dt so e to the 1 dt so it is e to the t so then we have d over dt E, uh, times y2 the integrating factor you're going to multiply the other side by the integrating factor so that means e to the 2t now uh, by integrating we have y2 et equal if we integrate this is very easy to integrate you can divide by 2 so the one half e to the 2t 
plus uh, C2, we can divide by ET, so that means Y2 equal one half E to the T plus C2 E to the minus T. You simply multiply by negative up, uh, power of that, okay? Inverse of that, that means E to the negative T. Okay, so we have everything. Now what we can do, as before, we can use the initial condition. So using uh, y2 0 equal 2, uh, we have 1 half e to the 0 plus c2 0, so it says that c2 equal 3 halves. Very good. Uh, so therefore, so you can see uh, thus, we have y2 as Let's plug in, so it is 1 half e to the t plus 3 halves e to the negative t. So now we can actually put them together, so we can say therefore, therefore, uh, the solution to the uh, IVP system, initial value system, is uh, we have y1 equal e to the t and y2 equal uh, one half e to the t plus three halves e to the minus t. So that is the uh, solution to the system. It's not uh, that difficult. Okay, so let's do a slightly different problem and which need a different approach. So let's look at this problem. So this is uh, so the next example. This is solve uh, x1 prime equal to y minus x y prime equal x. So that's a system uh, again uh, with x0 equal 0 and y0 equal 1. So here the independent variable is t. So now you can see that this again uh, there are two variables, two dependent variables, but this time you cannot solve one equation separately but you can remember in the previous example you uh, you could solve the first one without any any problems but can we do this now can we just integrate one equation we can do that because the first equation depend on uh, y the second equation depend on x so that means they are coupled each other so what we're gonna do is we try to remove one variable Using kind of interesting argument, we can take the derivative of one equation. We can take the derivative of one of those equations and substitute from the other. So that's the idea. So it's a slightly different idea. So what we can do, uh, so take the derivative. Take the derivative of one equation. It depends on which one. So take the derivative of one equation. An equation and then substitute from other. So that's the idea. We take the derivative. That's an interesting argument. So let's do that. Um, so I'm going to take the derivative of the first equation. You can also take the second one, but I'm going to go with the first one. Uh, so taking the derivative. Taking the derivative of the first equation, if you take the derivative of the first equation, what do you get? You're going to get that x double prime equal to y prime minus x prime. But we know that x prime, uh, y prime from the second equation, y prime equal x. But we can say since y prime equal x 
uh, from the second equation we can write this one as x double prime equal to but y prime is simply equal to x so i'm going to put it there minus x prime so you can see what happened so that goes there because that's the y prime term now what we can do we can bring all the terms to one side so you can write this one as x double prime uh, plus x prime minus 2x equals 0 this is just a first order linear so you can find the lambda and uh, after you find the lambda you can write the e equation so this is very simple after that uh, so the characteristic equation uh, uh, the the characteristic equation is what do you get lambda squared plus lambda minus 2 equals 0 that's what you get uh, this is very easy to uh, find factors so this is uh, lambda uh, plus 2 and lambda minus 1 equals 0 this is that lambda equal 1 and negative 2 uh, so since you know the lambda now we can write x so x is simply uh, c1 e to the 1 lambda value times t plus c2 e to the another other lambda value times t so that's the uh, x solution so i can call it equation one but we can refer that later now what we're going to do uh, since we know x now we can use one of those equations to solve for y so it depends on which equation because what is the easiest one to solve okay so i'm going to go with the second equation now you can also use the first equation if you want so by the second equation by the second uh, equation we have y prime equal to x that's what it says so that means it is simply c1 e t plus c2 e to the negative 2 t now what do you do to find y just integrate so by integrating by integrating y equal that's the integral of y1 prime that means it is the integral of simply uh, this one so c1 e t plus c2 e to the negative 2 t dt which is equals to <coughs> c1 e t uh, and then plus you can see the negative 2 you have divided by negative 2 when you integrate um, so just knowing that uh, you can write this one as negative 1 half c2 e to the negative 2t uh, because that's the uh, that's the integral uh, perfect uh, and then so so the question is are we going to add any more uh, constants actually since we already have two constants because there are only two equations and two constants we don't need any more constants I'm not going to add uh, extra one okay so that's a special observation here uh, so good so this is equation number two now what we're going to do uh, we can use the initial conditions we can use the initial conditions to uh, solve for c1 and c2 but I'm going to give you a little note here uh, so let's say uh, we use the other equation and see what's going to happen just just for uh, to know what's going to happen so this is a not sometimes that 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 method also works depending on some other equation uh, so we can say we can get the same uh, result so we can say uh, we can get we can get we can get the same result we can get the same result uh, we can say by the first equation by the first equation uh, so y because we had uh, x prime equal to y minus x that's what we have so this says that uh, so this implies that y equal you have divide by half so one half x prime uh, plus one half x that's what we have now what we can do we can substitute for the prime and x so if you do that so you're going to get one half uh, c1 et because a derivative with negative 2 c2 
e to the negative 2 t plus 1 half uh, c1 v uh, x we only know just plug in c1 e t plus c2 e to the negative 2 t and then you simplify so once you simplify the two you see that is c1 e t minus 1 half c2 e to the negative 2 t exactly so you get the same answer doing that also that's just the other way to do it uh, because sometimes this is much easier uh, but it depends on the problem that you have okay now let's go back to the problem so using the so now only thing we have to do is we need to find the c1 and c2 for that we can use the initial conditions so using initial conditions uh, using initial uh, conditions we uh, x0 equal 0 and y0 equal 1 we can write two equations so from the first one you're gonna get 0 equal if you plug in uh, 0 so you're gonna get c1 plus c2 from the second equation you get 1 equal c1 minus 1 half c2 that's what you get now the goal is to uh, solve these two or uh, this is not that bad you can just subtract them first uh, so you can see by subtracting So if you sub subtract, you're going to get 1 equal a negative 3 half C2. This says that C2 equal negative 2 third. And then uh, this implies that C1 equal which is negative C2 from the first equation. Just change the sign. Okay. So therefore... Uh, now we have the two solutions so we have x which is 2 third e to the t minus 2 third e to the negative 2 t and the y which is 2 third e to the t plus 1 third e to the negative 2 t so that's the solution to the uh, system so in the next one, uh, what we're going to do, uh, we can talk about the other technique, what we call the Laplace transform method. So we can see how we can use the Laplace transform to solve a system of equations, especially when you have higher order differential equations. For example, like, you know, uh, you have some, uh, in some equations, you're going to see second order derivative, third order derivative like that. So the Laplace transform method would be much easier in those cases. The reason is we know that when you have the when you take the Laplace transform, the derivative term does not introduce anything strange. It's only introduced the s term, just x power. Like if you have second second derivative, you have x squared term. If you have third derivative, you have x cubed term. So you just need to deal with the partial fractions. So that's the only difficulty. But otherwise, the derivative does not make much difference so that means laplace transform technique would be much easier in those cases so let's uh, talk about that so as the second method uh, let's talk about the laplace transform method so laplace transform method So this is also sim very similar to the uh, ODE uh, situation. So what we can do, uh, we can take the Laplace transform of each equation in the system. So it is to take uh, the Laplace transform, Laplace transform of uh, each equation each equation uh, in the system in the system and then eliminate then eliminate so that's what happened so we take the Laplace transform and then uh, try to remove uh, the uh, other variables leaving only one variable so, so it can be a large system but try to remove um, all except one and then uh, what we're gonna do uh, so this method works for higher order uh, systems well so work for 
work for higher order systems. Uh, well, so the reason is we know that uh, when you take the uh, Laplace transform, only thing introduced to the system is uh, you just introduce s terms. If it is uh, second derivative, you have a squared term. If it is a third derivative, you have a s cubed term. But that's the only thing uh, happened. Otherwise, there are no any other difficulties. So before we actually uh, do a problem, let's try to uh, think of a situation where it's going to create a, a higher order system. So uh, as an example, we're going to look at the um, uh, coupled spring system. So coupled coupled spring a system. So this is a like really nice situation where it's going to create a second order system. So what is a couple uh, system means? So let's say you have uh, two bulb uh, hanging from a uh, spring. So you have a spring, you have one bulb here, and then there's another spring, there's another bulb. So uh, so once you leave it like that, what's going to happen? Let's say uh, the masses are M1 and M2. And they have a spring constant. So what we call the spring constant, uh, k1, k2. So that is, uh, decides how long it's going to stretch when you put a force. So what's going to happen when you hang like that on vertically? Uh, so there will be some kind of stretch depending on the weight. And then it's going to stay uh, after it's going to come to what we call equilibrium situation. So let's say these are the equilibrium situation of those two. That means once you hang it. If there are no motion, it's going to stay at one position and that's called what we call the equilibrium position. So what we try to do, we try to measure the distance from that position. So it's going to make it much easier if you do that. So we're going to measure the distance uh, from their equilibrium position. So this is what we call the equilibrium position. And then we just kind of pull it and release. Once you pull it and release, what we call it, we're going to add a simple impulse. So we're going to like... Uh, Put a, just a sudden force and then release what we call impulse and then what's going to happen these bobs going to move uh, if they have k1 uh, those masses are different and the constant are different they're going to move in a weird situation um, like you know one go up one go down so it can stretch and then we can even see how the how it going to look like because we're going to solve this system so yeah so it's, it can be like complicated situation so what i'm going to do now is uh, let's look at a general situation. So, uh, so we're gonna put a ex uh, we're gonna extend uh, we're gonna put an external force impulse here. Once you put impulse, it's gonna move. So let's say the new position uh, of so so this this may be stretch like that. So let's say this is the new position. Uh, so that means stretch from this this much. So that is the x one. So that's x1. So this amount is I'm going to call x1t. So that's the displacement at time t from the equilibrium position. Same thing for the other spring as well. So it's going to stretch also. And it's also going to go down from its equilibrium position. So that's how much it's going to go down. So yeah, so this distance I'm going to call x2. So it's going to give you the displacement from its equilibrium position. Now what we're going to do, uh, we're going to write the equation. So you can see that uh, the first one, you can start with the zero position. This I'm going to call the zero position. So x1 equals zero, x2 equals zero. So uh, so what, what, what happened is, and you can see that uh, the first bob, uh, the first spring stretch x1. So when this stretch x1, it's going to create a force in the other direction. So up. And then uh, there's, a, there's a law called Hooke's law. Uh, due to the Hooke's law, uh, so Hooke's law, so it says that the force exerted is proportional to the spring constant. That's what it says. Uh, not the spring constant, uh, uh, proportional to the uh, displacement. Uh, so that means the force you can write as simply uh, for the first one k1 x1. So that's the force exerted by the spring uh, from the first spring. In the second spring, 
and you can see that the the relative distance how much is actually uh, stretch uh, depend on uh, the the difference between the two because even though it, uh, the second spring go x2 you can see the first one go x1 down so the re actual displacement would be x2 minus x1 well, that's the real uh, stretch so that means for the second spring you can see uh, so if you write the equation you can see there's a there's a force uh, going up like that and also it's also opposite to the motion motion is going always in the positive direction of x1 and x2 which are down so we assume the down is the positive direction but you can see that this force acting on the other side so that means a negative force so here uh, the same force acting on the other direction so that means the first bob has two forces the second bob has only one force which is on the opposite direction so i'm going to write equation for that so uh, so for the second bob the force is some call f1 uh, force is uh, it is uh, k2 is the length but the stretch is x2 minus x1 because you really don't see the full stretch you see only x2 minus x1 because x1 is coming towards so those are the forces but now we need to think about the direction as well so if you write the equation for the first one using this uh, newton second law so uh, So Newton's second law. Newton's second law says that uh, for the, I, I'm gonna write this this force up there uh, so that is I have a space to write them is k2 uh, the uh, the magnitude is x2 minus x1 so that's gonna give you the magnitude but we also need to consider the direction so I'm erase this one and then I will write the Newton's law for those two from the first bob from the first bob uh, what forces the first bob has so uh, Newton's second law remember it is f equal m a that's the Newton's second law so I'm gonna write that uh, acceleration is the second derivative of the displacement so it's just a second derivative so if you write it then you can say from the first part uh, m a so m a equal m1 the acceleration is distance is x uh, displacement x1 so the acceleration would be x1 double prime so that's the acceleration so that is m a now we need to write the force but when you look at the force you can see the down force going in the same direction so which is k2 x2 minus x1 but the top force going in the backward direction so it is minus k1 x1 that's for the first bob for the second bob the mass is m2 the acceleration is x2 double prime because we assume that x2 is the displacement now the force is only one force which is going backward which is minus k2 x2 minus x1 why it is minus it's going the opposite direction because we assume downside is the positive direction but it's going backward so those are negative so this is negative this is negative and this one is positive because it's going the same direction that's those are those signs so you can see plus and a minus this is minus okay so now you can see that this nicely create a system of equations see the system of equations which is second derivative now so and you can see that x1 depend on x1 and x2 x2 depend on x1 and x2 as well so both so this is a second order uh, differential equation but this is just really nice um, situation where you can actually see it and it's not that difficult it's just like a say uh, Newton's second law okay but this is just physics if you don't understand too much about that that's okay uh, what I will tell you but it's, it's very easy to create a, like a system like that it's, it's, it's very easy okay now what we can do in mathematics let's put some numbers there and see how we can solve it so we can use the Laplace transform technique to solve this system so let's look at the actual uh, system with some numbers I'm gonna pick some numbers so just to make things easy I'm gonna say m1 m m2 equal 1 and I'm gonna pick give some values to k1 and k2 uh, so let's say uh, m1 m2 equal 1 and k1 equal 6 and k2 equal 4 so let's say that and then write so let's say uh, take uh, m1 equal m2 equal 1 and k uh, let's say k1 equal 6 as the top one and k2 equal 4 okay just mathematics just put now some number that's it okay so we're gonna solve this system okay so the actual problem would be now so the example uh, solve the second order system solve 
the second order solve the second order system so the second order system so i'm gonna put the numbers and uh, try to write it like this uh, so it's become simply x1 double prime plus 10 uh, x1 because the sum of the two minus 4x2 equals 0 <coughs> first equation becomes like that the second equation becomes x2 double prime minus 4x1 plus 4x2 equal 0 so that is the system okay once you put those numbers m1 m2 equal 1 and k1 equal 6 and k2 equal 4 this is what you get uh, let's say with um, let's put some initial values so with x1 0 x2 0 equal 0 that means the initial position so we assume that that's the equilibrium situation is zero we assume that that's where you can start measuring and then let's say you're gonna put a initial speed of one for the first bob and x2 prime for the second bob let's say you're gonna put negative one that means one you're gonna send down the other one gonna send up with the same speed okay now let's see how to solve this one Okay, you solve this and you try to write equation for x1 and x2 it's going to give you the position of those two bobs so what how is how to solve which state the laplace transform of the equation okay so the answer uh, take laplace transform so taking uh, laplace transform so we take the laplace transform of the two system write two equations so from the first one you're going to get uh, s squared x1 s minus s small x0 minus small x prime that's the derivative and then plus you have <coughs> 10 x1 minus 4 x2 so those are big ones those are Laplace transform and 0 is 0 similarly for the second one you're gonna get x squared x2 s minus s actually these are one so it's a, uh, x1 x1 uh, this is s x2 0 minus x2 0 x2 prime 0 so yeah those two and then minus uh, 4 x1 big one and then plus 4x2s now let's also plug in the values and we know that x1 prime is 0 so this is 0 this is 0 and x1 prime is 1 and this is negative 1 okay so once you plug in those values you're gonna get this system okay so I'm gonna plug in these values and collect the terms as normally we do uh, so this is a new system uh, in the Laplace domain so let's plug in the values now so plug in the value uh, if you co collect the terms you're gonna get uh, s squared plus 10 uh, x1 s uh, and then I'm gonna write the s1 terms one below the other so it is negative 4 x1 s <coughs> then we have uh, s squared plus 4 x2 s and then we have negative 4 x2 s which is equal to 0 which is equal to 0 so sorry get uh, actually not 0 uh, you have uh, this one is 1 this one is negative 1 so you get 1 and negative 1 so I'm going to call this equation 1 and this is equation 2 this is the new system this is a new system okay now the goal is to so so this is the Laplace equations so new system after substituting the values now the goal is to remove one of those eliminate one of those uh, variables so you can either remove x1 term or you can remove the x2 term so there are two terms uh, we have x1 term here or we have x2 term here. 
So it's just up to you how you, what do you want to do. Just remove one of them. How to do that? We're going to use the same idea that we used before. We're going to write, we can try to create the opposite sign and then we can add them. So for example, you can multiply the, uh, so I'm going to try to uh, remove the, uh, I'm going to try to remove the X2 terms. That means I'm going to multiply the top one by that and the bottom one by the opposite sign, I'm going to just multiply by four. You're going to multiply bottom one by four the top one by x squared plus 4 and then add once you do that x2 term gonna get cancelled <coughs> so you get x1 so that's the idea it's a very simple idea it's exactly similar to what we do with normal uh, equation like regular equation so so the idea is I'm gonna write this so remove so eliminate okay remove one variable remove one variable x1 or x2 so it's up to you uh, which one okay good uh, so let's do that so we can do that by now I'm gonna say x squared plus 4 because that's the missing term so simply multiply by the missing term and then and also try to get the opposite sign so it's easy just add them or subtract otherwise so four times not negative four just four times two so once you do that you can once you multiply by the opposite terms and add you're gonna get cancelled so you simply get uh, x squared plus 10 and then x squared plus 4 x1 minus the x2 get cancelled and then you have you multiply by 4 so you get negative 16 negative 16 uh, x1 x1 equal on the other side what you have you have uh, you multiply the first one by x squared plus 4 and the second one by uh, just 4 so that means that's what you get so that means these two get cancelled so let's see what we get so here what are you gonna get uh, you uh, x1 is common but you have to multiply uh, these two and subtract 16 but once you do that what do you get you're gonna get x to the fourth power plus 14 s squared plus you have a 40 minus 16 24 that's what you get uh, x1 equal s squared and you can see that this this has two factors what are the factors S squared plus 2 and s squared plus 12 those are the factors x1 so that means x1 is equal s squared over s squared plus 2 and s squared plus 12 now what you're gonna do you can use the partial fractions uh, so we can use the partial fraction method and to find the partial fraction let's say you found the partial fractions let's say you're gonna uh, if you do that you're gonna get uh, one fifth uh, s squared plus two not x squared s squared s squared plus two plus six fifth s squared plus two that you can do just use the partial fraction technique and you will end up with those two partial fractions. Now things are easy. You just need to invert. Once you invert, you get x1. Okay, very simple. So uh, take inverse Laplace. Taking inverse Laplace, you're gonna get x1 t is let's let's rearrange the terms. So uh, one over five square root two l inverse because we need the square root 2 to the top uh, because that's the omega value so 2 so this part is clear we're going to multiply and divide by square root 2 plus uh, so we have we have 6 over we can now you can divide by square root 12 uh, l inverse so you have square root 12 over S squared plus 12 perfect now this is equals to uh, 
you can multiply the top and bottom by square root 2 you don't have to but you can so when you when you do that you're gonna get square root 2 over 10 and you can see this is simply sine square root 2 omega square root 2 t plus the same thing square root 12 means it is 4 times 3 so 2 times square root 3 so 2 get cancelled so you get 3 over square root 3 that means it is square root 3 over 5 again sine in this case a is 2 square root 3 t so that is x1 now uh, the same thing uh, so what you can do is you can if you want you can again try to remove x1 now and then solve for x2 that's one way or since we only found the uh, Laplace transform x1 you can substitute that to one of those equations so let's do that so we can say by uh, equation 1 by equation 1 we have uh, Laplace transform we have Laplace transform of x2 is uh, simply given by 1 fourth so this from equation 1 1 fourth see you can do that s square this just simple algebra times s squared over s squared plus 2 times s squared plus 12 minus 1 okay this is just from equation number 1 so let's simplify this a little bit take the common denominator uh, so this is the common denominator and then uh, multiply the, the the other two terms and subtract so once you do that uh, you should get this you should get negative s squared plus 6 over uh, s squared plus 2 s squared plus 12 that's what you get again use the partial fraction technique uh, so if you use the partial fraction so you should end up getting uh, so what do you get you're gonna get <coughs> uh, so you will get let's see what you get uh, you get negative uh, two fifth one over s squared plus two minus three fifth 1 over s squared plus 12 so it's very similar uh, to this uh, problem we just did so we can find what is the missing term so in the first one we need square root 2 top and bottom and in the other one we need square root uh, uh, 2 square root 3 <coughs> so that means we can rearrange the terms like that so that means we end up getting after we do that uh, so what is x2 so let's write it so x2 are going to be x2s is still the plus transform so we can write this one as negative 2 over 5 square root 2 l inverse so we have square root 2 over s squared plus 2 and then again uh, it's a minus uh, minus we have 3 over 5 square root 12 L inverse square root 12 over S squared plus 12 so these are all clear now okay and then uh, find the inverse as before so it is you can simplify this one so you get negative square root 12 or 5 sine square root 2 t sine square root 2 t minus square root 3 over 10 sine 2 square root 3 t uh, so you can see therefore so let's try it all together therefore uh, the solution therefore the solution to the system uh, is uh, we have 
x1 prime not x1 x1 which is negative square root 2 over 10 sine square root 2 t plus square root 3 over 5 sine 2 square root 3 t and then x2 t is negative square root 2 t uh, square root 2 5 sine square root 2 t minus square root 3 over 10 sine 2 square root 3 t so the question is so that's the solution those are two solutions just use Laplace transform and get the two solutions uh, now you can see so the question is are they periodic so are so are they periodic it's an interesting question so you can see that those are not periodic the reason is these two are not uh, multiples because uh, for that either those has to be rational numbers. if they are rational numbers then it can be but in they are not they are irrational numbers so when they are irrational they are not going to be uh, periodic uh, because you can write uh, common term there so uh, so those functions are not going to be periodic uh, you can see they slightly change each other so let's look at the actual graphs of this one and uh, to see uh, how it looks like So if you uh, plot the two functions x1 and x2 and this is what you get and you can see that uh, they are not really periodic and you can see they slightly change every time so if you even plot more so uh, so I plot from 0 to 15 and you can see that um, uh, they are they are close but they are not exactly equal so in the other words uh, that means they are not uh, periodic functions so every time those bobs go in a different motion so uh, so this is these are what we normally call random motion so random motion means you cannot predict what's going to happen in the next time uh, but you have equation but uh, these are still random because they have like uh, chaotic behavior so uh, so this is like a kind of nice way to generate what we call random numbers so if you need a random number just find a position like a, just pick a number uh, like a, let's say the value at 5 or value at 10 like that so then it's gonna create it's gonna give you a random number so this is how you sometimes create a random number so what we call random number generators okay so uh, so this is the uh, the end of uh, Laplace transform technique and the next uh, we're gonna talk about uh, the eigenvalue method okay thank you